Well, I'm back, guys. Welcome to part four of this... Uh... Documentary? Catalog? Uh... Diary? I honestly don't know what this is anymore because I thought that I would... Only be using this platform to tell stories of stuff that happened to me in the past on this property. But now I'm being forced to bring this... The... Journal? To the present. You see, those people from the organization did come to see about the keylet. And now there's a guy named Mark living in my house, sleeping on my couch. Uh, well, not, not really sleeping, more unconscious. But we'll get to that part later. After a few days of this organization that wouldn't tell me their name, not showing up, I figured it was just a troll who managed to figure out my email account and hack into my personal life. But alas, on the third day, he rose. <laughs> not really, no, but uh, four guys did end up knocking on my front door. They were all dressed pretty normally except for the matching gray combat boots that told me that these were men of action. Which also means they're going to try their hardest to push me around and play badass. My suspicions were confirmed when the guy in the lead introduced himself as Mark and immediately asked me why I claimed to have actually killed Aquila. What a prick, right? Look, I still don't know what the fuck Aquila is and I don't claim to have killed one. The lady in the tree said I killed one. I only assume that she's talking about the hairless coyote that I killed down near the creek. At the mention of the lady in the tree, they all looked at each other with an expression of this dude is a waste of time. Well, the feeling was mutual. I was getting a little impatient by now, so I chimed in with a if you guys are done being superior to me, can I take you to where I killed the coyote? The one behind Mark, whose name I don't remember, said sure, let's get this over with. So 30 minutes later, we're standing in front of where I killed the thing that I now know wasn't a coyote. Look, I know, I know I may not have clarified it yet, but I killed this thing well over a year ago. Shit. Maybe two years. And the only reason that the organization knew that I had killed it was because of the post that I made earlier this week. A lot of decomposing and feeding can happen to a body in the woods over that long of a time. On top of that, I hadn't been to this part of the property in a very long time because there aren't any trails or interesting locations here, but I was taken aback when I saw what happened to the body over the course of the two years that it had been out there. Absolutely nothing. The body looked like I had shot it yesterday. Only evidence that it was older was the fact that all the blood had all seeped out of the head wound and long since dried up. But the skin, the face, the fur on its paws, they were completely preserved. It only had fur on its paws, which was odd. When we got to the body, the snickering crew of four went dead silent. Now you said you killed this around two years ago, didn't you? Said Mark. Yeah, but I hadn't been down here since. Why is the thing still preserved like that? What the hell's happening? One of the guys who hadn't said a word up until this point chimed in. Keyluts are so unusual and dark that nothing usually in nature will have anything to do with an authentic one. Uh, this includes bacteria, fungi, scavenger animals. Then he muttered something about a level 107 beast. Mark looked at me with a serious face and said, So this Keylet story's true. Does that mean all the shit you said in those posts about this place were true? Before I could answer with a what do you think, asshole, a low raspy laughter started to surround us and begin closing in. It was coming from all directions. We looked up from the body to see at least 50 hooded figures surrounding us laughing maniacally. All four of the military men pulled their concealed pistols and took aim. But before they could fire a shot, I called out over the laughter. Hector, I told you next time you and your little chosen crew Sneak up on me, I'm kicking your ass again! Everybody paused. The Chosen, the four organized men, and the Pale that had just crested a hill 30 yards behind one of the cult members. A few seconds later, one of the hooded figures took off his hood and revealed a chubby, jolly-looking face with rosy cheeks and wire-rimmed prescription glasses. Aw, oh, man, we didn't know they were with you, Cole. We thought these were trespassers. We're sorry. Hector said with a downcast gaze. Why would you even need them to begin with? I retorted. Hector hesitated for a moment and said, Our God wants a real sacrifice. Those white, crawly, humanoid things just aren't doing it for him anymore. At this point, the pail that I could see frozen on top of the hill turned and bolted back in the woods. Hector then proceeded to call to the other hooded figures. 
They're with Cole. We can't have them. There was a collective sigh as the Chosen looked at the ground and walked away into the woods. I didn't notice until they were all gone that, that the four organization men hadn't lowered their weapons the entire time. Are you pussies ready to head back to the house? It's dark in 45 minutes. If those guys got you on edge, you won't last long at night. Mark shot me a look that explained in detail how much he hated me, without the need for words, while his three partners put their thick rubber gloves on and put the keylet into a sort of body bag. As we were walking back towards my house with the three stooges carrying the corpse of the demon dog, Mark starts questioning me. What was that group back there? Uh, some cult, I guess. They told me they worship, uh, cunt Hulu or something. He seemed kind of taken aback for a second and then asked, Why did they seem wary of you, but not flinch when we had guns trained on them? Um, simple. They don't fear death. But they do crack when exposed to severe pain for long enough. Again, Mark seemed surprised by my answer. He started to strike me as simple-minded. So, how did you inflict this pain on him? Look, I don't want to answer any more questions. I really don't. And I really didn't. This was the kind of shit that I don't like to dwell on. That was a different life. I don't like when it seeps back into the present. Sure, it's nice to have the local murder cult leave you alone, but... I used methods that I regret to get that luxury. The last thing Mark said to me on our hike back to the house was, Look, dude, my mind is telling me that you're batshit crazy. My instincts are telling me that you're a threat. Which one are you? I looked him dead in the eyes and mumbled, That's up to you. And let me tell you, that look on his face was priceless. I love mind games. A few minutes later, we reached the house, and all four of the goons walked up to the big black van that they arrived in. They started loading up the body as I reached my doorknob to get inside. I hear Mark start raising his voice while talking on his phone. What? This guy isn't right in the head. I know there's stuff here, but why? Look, let me get a team down. Okay, yeah, he does have experience, but... Wait, what did, what did you say? He then stared at me with a mixture of confusion and disbelief. They told him where I came from. I could tell by the way he looked at me. He hung up the phone without any more arguing and began to walk over to me. As he reaches me, he says, My higher-ups have told me I need to stay with you for a while and keep an eye on the activity around here. I responded with, You can't be serious. Wish I wasn't. They also wanted me to remind you that you didn't pay for this house or this property. And with that, I opened the door with my best butler impression and gestured for him to enter my home. As he walked through the door and dropped what I assumed to be his emergency bug-out bag on the floor, he froze. Oh, can I just say one thing real quick? Fuck Skinny. I didn't hear how heavily he was breathing at first because of the van was making noise as it was driving away, but as those sounds faded, I realized that Mark was breathing like he had just sprinted a marathon. His eyes were trained on the window with his body completely rigid, with his hand on his hip, ready to draw his gun. I followed his gaze to the window where I had confronted Skinny many times before, and sure enough, there he was. Only this time, he wasn't somebody I recognized. This time, he was a fairly attractive, tall, athletic blonde woman. She was smiling, holding a heart-shaped balloon. Upon closer inspection, I could tell the balloon read, It's a girl. I rushed in front of Mark to try to snap him out of whatever trance he was in, but I soon realized that tears were welling up in his eyes. By this, I gathered that this woman is no longer with us. And the girl... Most likely wasn't either. <sighs> Fuck you, Skinny. I calmly started explaining what Skinny was to Mark, but soon after I started, he stopped me. I read the stories, Cole. I know that you've talked about this thing before. I'm trained to handle these kinds of things, so don't worry about me because I'm gonna fucking kill it! 
With that, he made a mad dash to the back door in an effort to get outside and confront Skinny. I managed to block him and push him to the ground, saying, he won't come inside, so just keep your shit together and we live. Mark wasn't in a listening mood, though. He jumped back to his feet and straight into a fighting stance. Oh, great. After a second, he threw a fast left hook straight from my face. He wasn't fast enough. I ducked under it, and I swung and connected my elbow to the side of his chin. He went out like a light. And by the time the scuffle was over, Skinny was gone. We put Mark on the couch, and now I'm typing this. Thinking about going through his computer before he wakes up. Anyway, that's all for today. Please, if anyone knows what a keylet is, let me know. What did I kill? And what did Mark mean by he was trained to deal with this kind of stuff? What is he, a monster hunter or something? I'll try to get some answers before my next post. See y'all soon.